Hello everybody. Welcome. Welcome again. Oh my gosh. Father, you are bringing so many as far as I can see in all directions. There's just billions and billions of human spirits here. Father, we thank you. I see they're coming in and I just want to let everybody know I won't begin till everybody's in their place. I'll just kind of talk. We just welcome you to the garden today. We're going to be teaching on verse 5 of Isaiah 61. This is one of the foundational scriptures that Pastor Deborah has had in her life, helping her to learn how to help people the Lord's way and not the way of the world of mental health counseling. Is everybody seated? All right. Let's begin. We're going to continue in the School of Light, an educational series for you, the Spirit. And we have been working through the website in the section at the top of the heading called The Kingdom of Agape Love. We are in Prayer and Fasting, Volume 1 section. And on the right-hand side, the sidebar, you'll see a father's heart, a father's desires, and a father's prophetic words. This was Scripture Isaiah 61 from the Old Testament and Isaiah 62. These were the foundational pillars of my life in learning how to help you the Lord's way. I had to know who this God was, what his heart was for you, what his desires were, yeah. and his prophetic words. I had to know what was wrong with you. And Isaiah 61 has been teaching us that he sent his word that was anointed with his Holy Spirit, and his word would heal you. How can a word heal you? He is a strange God. He put his word first. He spoke it. He decreed it into the earth through prophets. He had them write it down, written out, told over generations and generations, speaking his heart's desire, telling us what was wrong with humanity, telling us how he was going to help us, telling us why we needed his help and what we would be like with him and to him when the help arrived and we were healed. Yeah. And then we learn back in another scripture in Luke that a young man named Christ Jesus stood up one day in the synagogue, read Isaiah 61 to those who were there, and said, Today, in your ears, is this scripture fulfilled. It sent shockwaves throughout the congregation. They didn't understand the spiritual implications that a spirit was in there, that the word of God was in there. They just thought he was the biological son of Mary and Joseph. Nothing special. He was not a rabbi, hadn't gone to school, wasn't a Sadducee, a zealot, a Pharisee. He's just a son of an earthly guy that was a carpenter. So how? what right did he have to say that now that I've spoken this, it's fulfilled in your ears because only the God could fulfill his own words. Mm -hmm. So Pastor Deborah began studying these scriptures and I put them up because you have to go through them, write them, study them, look up the words, follow the scripture references out. And we've been working through Isaiah 61. We're up to verse number five, and that's what this lesson is going to be about today. But first, pray. that's right, prayer. My goodness, a lot of you are coming back. That's wonderful. Anybody like to open up with prayer for everybody? 
You would? Okay. Do you know it's great practice to be asked to open up with prayer? A lot of pastors and ministers, they want all that glory. And they want their words to be heard so that they can be seen. But I had to learn how to stand up in groups myself and pray. I had to learn how to pray with individuals in jails and prisons. How to pray in deliverance sessions. How to pray when I'm in prayer. How to petition God as if I was in the courtroom of the universe. I had to plead my case before the king. I had to learn to come into his presence, get on my knees, and petition the great I am. Mm -hmm. A lot of prayer practice is required. You must learn how to do it in the spirit. While you're doing spiritual activity, even in your dreams, your soul must get comfortable in prayer in front of people. I've been asked to give Blessings over food. Can you do that? Can you be asked to give pray over a dying person? Hold their hand while they die. Do you know enough of the Bible stories to do ministry? I want to tell you a story how that works with practice. I was learning how to do spiritual counseling in the jail. And I followed a lady who was a licensed clinical mental health counselor. She went in a room, set a table up. We were on one side, and the jailers, uh, the prison guards, told us there was one lady they wanted us to talk to because she was really having a bad time because her boyfriend, who was also in jail, had just passed away. And she was uncontrollable, and you couldn't get her to obey and do anything. She needed help. So they brought her in. And she was just crying and sobbing and angry and mad. And the mental health counselor started talking in mental health terms. And I was given wisdom from God of a Bible story. The young lady said that her boyfriend was a heroin addict shooting up needles in both legs. But he loved her, was always encouraging her, wanted to marry her legally. But she never wanted to. And then he died in jail. They actually allowed her to come while he was dying. And it just devastated her. She was lost, wanted to commit suicide, had no hope. This counselor who had been doing counseling legally in a private practice for many years didn't know what to do. She was staying in her standard operation as a mental health counselor. God gave me Bible stories. And I said to her, sweetie, you know what you are? You are the blessing. And I told her the story about Ruth, who was a high priestess. And a young man who was a Jewish guy had come into her nation and told her about this God, who you cannot see. And she eventually became a believer in this God of the Ten Commandments. Well, he got thrown into prison. She helped him escape. And he got, uh, I think, a sword in his back or a, a spear. And on his dying bed, him and Ruth were married in front of his mama. And he took her as his wife and she took him as her husband. And then he dies. And she was in such tears and was crying to this lady, Naomi. Where is God's blessing? Where is God's blessing? I saved him. I believed him. But yet he killed him. This man I loved. Where are the blessings of God? And Naomi turned to Ruth and said, You are the blessings. You came out of darkness and ignorance. And you believed. You were the blessing that God was after. My son already believed in him. He was the entrance and the doorway for you. You were the blessing. So I told her this story. And she's listening intently. And I said, when you believe in Christ Jesus, 
We are told we are married to him. We are engaged. But there is no legal document from the state or a church or a pastor. But we believe we are betrothed, that we are his bride, and yet we have no physical evidence of it. Ruth had no evidence of her marriage with this young man who had told her about this God who cared about ants. This God you could not see that did not like killing innocent children at the altar of Moloch for blessings. Her conscience came alive. And she began believing. She was troubled. It's a great movie. Stuart Granger plays in it. Excellent to see the turmoil when you start believing. You start coming out of ignorance. And I told her, there was no natural in the flesh marriage certificate for this Jesus. In her heart, she was married to him. In his heart, he was married to her. She was a married woman. When I told her that, her whole light and life changed. She was happy. She realized she was the blessing that her husband sacrificed himself for. He encouraged her, told her she's going to do great things. Even as he's shooting up heroin, he was speaking into her future. He was speaking blessings to her, and she couldn't see it at the time. The mental health lady couldn't do anything but listen. This lady's whole emotional state went from hopelessness and suicide, tears of agony and pain. She felt guilty for not getting married. She felt guilty for not giving him more. But she gave him her her life. She took care of him when he was sick and then on the drugs. She was a loving, kind person. I don't know what she did to get into jail. But when she realized she was married and she was the blessing and her husband gave his life to speak into her future, that she could go start a ministry in his name and she could help other women that were like her have hope. The session ended. She was filled with light and joy and peace, smiling. The word of God and the stories of God had changed her. The mental health counselor was just in shock. Afterwards, and we went down, she asked me, how did I do that? What just happened? I said, I took the word of God that God had given me with his wisdom. He put his anointing on it to minister the Lord's way to this precious lady in jail. She said, how did you do it? I studied. I was mentored. She wanted to do that with me, but she couldn't. She was too wrapped up in earthly things, her family, her husband, her job. She was a baby Christian. She didn't really have the time. She didn't want to take the time. She was still stuck in mental health counseling. But boy, did that just put it down. God changed that lady's life, changed her completely because I knew the word. I knew Bible stories. I could, God was leading me right then and there in the jail. So learning how to pray in front of people Minister in front of people is vital. You must learn how to do it on the telephone, in the spirit, in person, in jails, in meetings. I've had to stand up and pray over food. You've got to be able to help people die and pray over them and bless them. It's learning how to stand up spiritually, emotionally, and physically as a representative of the great I Am the speaker of Isaiah 61. Wonderful prayer. Let me complete it. Father, we thank you for the prayer of this little one to all of us. We thank you, Father, that he has spoken. Would you like to finish it out for us instead of me? Okay, you go ahead. Why 
wonderful. Father, let's pick up now. We're going to start lesson number five of the Father's heart, a Father's desire, and a Father's prophetic word. Right out of the website of the kingdom of heaven, prayer and fasting, volume one. Okay, we are in verse number five. In verse number four, we learned some powerful things about ourselves. That we were not in a condition that God wanted us to be in spiritually. We had desolations in our life. Our cities and our chambers of our heart and our mind and our soul. They were destroyed. They were laid waste. They needed repair and restoring and rebuilding and renewing. It was a mess in there, according to him. And if you've ever seen some movies, one of the great movies to help you what that looks like, is go watch The Cell. Mm -hmm. It was a movie with Jennifer Lopez. Watch the movie The, the Three Faces of Eve with Joanne Woodward. And watch the movie Sybil with Sally Field. It shows you the way cities the destruction, the, the horrible shape of the soul and the spirit due to trauma and abuse. Mm -hmm. That's what is in us. And he is telling us that's a waste city. It, it's totally destroyed, messed up, broken, fragmented. The lands up here have been forsaken by love and joy and peace. The chambers of the heart and the soul are just devastated, perverted, evil, and twisted. They're vain. That means empty. They're fruitless. They have no purpose. It's chaos. And it's a desert. It's a wilderness of the kingdom of heaven, of the kingdom of light, and of the kingdom's spiritual purposes or value. And it's a mess. And he's telling us that this has gone on inside of humanity for generations after generations. Now let's get to verse 5. Verse 5, and along with all of that mess, he says, And spiritual strangers shall stand and spiritually feed, nourish, rule over, care for your spiritual flocks. What that means in a deep thing is that there'll be spiritual ideas, concepts, philosophies, and beliefs that are given to you by spiritual strangers, demonic spirits from the kingdom of darkness. They're going to stand over your mind, and they're going to feed you lies and deception. They're going to nourish you with evil, perversion, lust, greed. They're going to care for your children also. They're going to prepare your children for their use. And they're going to be the spiritual alien to you. They're going to plow your mind through words and concepts and traumas and abuse. They're going to tear up your stuff. And they're going to be the vine dress. They're going to make sure you produce kingdom of darkness fruit. They're going to make sure you produce the right fruit that they want. They're going to fertilize you with words, trauma, and abuse, fear of death, along with, and these waste cities will be just devastated in this condition without being healed without the Spirit of the Lord in you to bring about healing. There'll be this deep, it's like you don't own yourself. You don't plant anything. You're just used and abused. And your children are tortured and abused. You must produce the fruit they desire. And they will feed you. They will be your nourishment. Lies and deceptions, lust and greed, flesh, sex. They'll feed you with child pornography, feed you with gambling, feed you with money, feed you with legacy and fame, 
feed you with money after you've been president or prime minister. They'll nourish you to vote this way, pass these laws. Okay, that's what's going on, and he's telling us. That is your condition in your spirit, in your soul, and your physical body. I had to learn there is a world beyond the physical. And how I learned this was through multi-generational Satanist. The multi-generational Satanist, they have to be in meetings every weekend. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And they have a lot of holidays that they must be in. Typically, Satan desires your physical body to be there. You could have the meetings in somebody's home, like a personal Bible study. You could have it in big barns or out in the woods. You could have bonfires. You could be uh, in international meetings. But he requires you there so that you will worship him. You will perform sacrifice for him. You will continually be reinforced in your programming through drugs, sex, demons, violent things that happen before your eyes. You will be in the temple. There will be a priest and a priestess conducting the service. You will sing and praise him. This goes on every weekend. And of course, there's special things. Anytime you're going to go do battle, go to war, you got to go to the gods. Get their permission. So what I learned was human beings are traveling in the physical, but with multi-generational Satanists because they were experts at moving their spirit out of their bodies. I had this one case where these great high priests were going to an international meeting in America somewhere. And they were in a car on a trip. And they were going to go there, stay. Maybe they were going to say they were going to go play golf for the weekend. Or they were going to a seminar for a weekend. And they'll be back to their families after the weekend. But... And what the goal was, they were going to go down and crown a new queen of the International Brotherhood because the old one, Candy, had gotten saved. So they were in their car, and I prayed to pray, God, don't let their physical bodies get there. Their car broke down. They weren't going to make it because God counts. He takes attendance. You cannot show up. If you can't get there physically, you will better get there spiritually. You better get your spirit there inside of another human being and show up at the meeting. Well, I bound those spirits. I asked God so they could not go spiritually. I started understanding what Satan's pure goals were. It was in the realm of the spirit, because that's where God's working, just like we are here. Mm -hmm. Satan takes everything of God. He knows it's the best. He knows it's the pattern. He takes it into his kingdom and perverts it. So I was running into people who would get arrested and go to prison, but their spirits would leave their body and go into other humans who were outside. And I would ask them, what do you do? Well, we type on the computer. We hack. We have sex. We drink and eat through the human body. I even had a young man, he's in heaven now, tell me if I would have sex with my husband, he'd get inside my husband, and he could physically and in the spirit feel and he would be having sex with me, spiritually. I thought, are you kidding? Never heard of such a thing. But that was their way of life. So I started having to study spiritual life of witches, those in the occult, those that go into trances, those of the shamans and the witch doctors, those of the yogi, 
those of those people who are in leadership, the imams, yeah. I had to study their spiritual life, their connections. Mm -hmm. Voodoo, I had to study that. What was going on? I had to do deep work spiritually to even understand verse 5. I didn't know who the spiritual strangers were that were standing and feeding and nourishing these waste cities. I had to watch movies. But God was slowly through many books, true stories, movies, the Word, Bible movies. He was teaching me, giving me these revelations. He was telling me the condition of humanity, that I was going to go and help. And I needed to know their spiritual condition. I needed to know the condition of their soul. What caused a fragmented so in the three faces of Eve, she finally tells us when she was a little girl, she was so traumatized about kissing her dead grandmother. She couldn't stand the thought. She split. Somebody kissed grandma. That was Eve Black. And she had Eve White, the little girl who was so in a, she sort of disappeared and was drained. But until a loving man came into her life and knew she had problems and said, that's okay, I'll be with you. Could she get healed? Love provided the way. And Jane, who she probably was always supposed to be, came forth and Eve White and Eve Black disappeared. In Sybil, she was tortured by a mother who was a paranoid schizophrenic, pillar of the community, churchgoer. Sally Field did an excellent job. It shows you what happens when strangers to God's love stand over you, they feed you, they give you nourishment through words and torture, they rule over you with abuse. They care for your mind and they twist it and pervert it. Yeah. The cell. Yeah. I didn't even know about it. Some of the Satanists I had been working with told me to go watch it. They desired for me to know what was going on in their minds. What it was like. Yeah. Jennifer Lopez played a great job. Another movie that helped me was the Manchurian Candidate with Frank Sinatra and Janet Leigh. Black and white movie about programming. These strangers that ruled over and fed and nourished these American prisoners and tortured them and caused them to break in their minds and create personalities. They became slaves, easily controlled, yeah, I got right here and I go, who are these spiritual strangers? What do you mean they're ruling over and caring for their spiritual flocks? Who are the flocks? God's people. And if you're a parent, your children. Somebody else is raising your kids and perverting. It could be the school teachers, the school system. Now it can be social media. Friends, they're speaking words, doing things, training them up the way that Satan wants them to go. They're the spiritual alien to us. But we don't know that. We just go about whatever we go about and we get whatever we get. But I learned the power of love coming through another human. There was a great true story I read about a young lady who had been severely abused in her family. She got to psychiatrist. She had insurance. But when the insurance would run out, that was the end of the therapy. But she ran into one, and her insurance ran out. And he said, no problems. You just keep coming to me. I don't care about the money. He never prayed with her, never read scriptures. But she started getting healing at home, not in the therapy session. And she had multiple personalities. She felt like she had twins 
and they were slowly dying. And I asked God, what's going on? He said, because that psychiatrist generally loved this woman, did not want any money for it and would see her, that provided an atmosphere of humanity's love their neighbor. I would work through that atmosphere. And I would heal this lady. Not in the therapy session, but at home. And I would get the glory and show Satan that through the avenue of love, agape love, healing would occur. In something he did, I would show him the power of love. Because he didn't read any scriptures to her. Didn't pray for her. But God was working in the high heavens, in the spiritual realm. In the atmosphere of love. From this psychiatrist to this woman. And God was working. She wanted to be healed. God was removing the aliens, the strangers, replacing those waste cities in her. And he was healing her. He had sent himself when that atmosphere between a human and a human was genuine love. No money exchanged. No insurance. God could work. Like in the jail story. There was no, I was not getting paid to do that. I was volunteering on a Sunday morning. Instead of going to church and just getting praise and worship and blessed for myself, I was out in the kingdom of darkness ministering to those who needed help. So verse 5 tells us we are a mess. And it gives us more in-depth knowledge of the kind of mess we're in and why God had to send his word why it had to be anointed it was going to come in and do some things and verse 5 tells us it's got to come against spiritual aliens it's got to come against all that they're doing in our lives and we need it desperately yes you know that some aliens have been feeding you and your children? Okay, and what do you want, dear? You want to be healed. Okay. Father, you have brought these precious spiritual ones here to hear your words of truth, of healing, of freedom. Father, your word says that you love them, you made a way for them, and you sent your word to bring healing to them. You watch over your words. Father, we have some here that they now see that inside of them, they are as, they're strangers to you. They are as the three faces of Eve, as Sybil. They are like the lady in the jail. Strangers that they don't know, their taskmasters have been beating them up. Feeding them with words of lies and deceptions. They are caring for their kids and raising them up to be horrible creatures. Father, they ask that you remove these strangers, these aliens and their words and their food and their nourishment. Father, you know they need to be rebirthed. That they need a whole new system that only you will feed and you will nourish. Father, you sent your word to heal them. Father, do what only you can do and take these spiritual little ones and fulfill Isaiah 61 and 62 in their lives spiritually help them father to begin rebuilding in you renewing themselves in you and let the power of agape love do its healing and its work in them in the name of jesus christ amen 
Father, I see you working. I'm not going to stay long now. Do your work, Father, while they're here. And touch them with your love and your healing. According to Isaiah 61. In the name of Jesus, amen. Bye, everybody. Shh, you be quiet. He's working. You come again and we'll pick up in verse 6. Bye. Thank you for listening and watching this video. It is an honor and a pleasure to have you stopped by today and watch. This is Pastor Deborah, and I hope you come again and watch many, many more videos and learn and grow spiritually and hear how she has helped people spiritually the Lord's way for many, many years. Come again. Watch another one. And we welcome you to be a subscriber to the channel, to make comments, and if you wish to contact Pastor Deborah, please email her at her email address for the ministry at Pastor Deborah at Agape Love is here dot org. You can also see these videos on Twitter and on the website in the many different sections that they are put into. Enjoy, and it was once again an honor to have you watch and listen. Thank you, and come again to another video of Agape Love, Love is Here Ministries, a ministry of helping people the Lord's way that Pastor Deborah has been doing for many, many years. Love always and forever, Pastor Deborah.